Previously on the Comic Junkies Corner. I've got to get to the dig site, and you have to get to the museum. I got a few hours. Don't be late. Rocky League? Oh, you will lose so bad. Hey, as soon as Ash is done over there, I'll show you. I, wait, who? What's up? Dude. What the hell is that? This book, it's the discovery of a lifetime. That book looks like it's covered in doo-doo crumb. <laughs> I'm serious. Why does this book look like you pulled it straight out of someone's booty hole? You know what? Come here. Stop! You're gonna oh. shut up and listen now? Hmm? This isn't just any book. This is the dark hold. The book that summons life. Get it out. Wait! Ow. Will you just listen for a second? You're not going to summon any demons over here. That's not how it works. This isn't in the movies. You don't read a book and magically summon demons. Oh, really? You need at least a blood sacrifice. What are you guys arguing about now? Hakeem's being a baby about a little freaking book. A book that summons demons? You, you can't summon demons from a book, man. Yeah, you need like a blood sacrifice. See? How does everyone know this except me? Um, so, who's hungry? Uh, what are you making? Uh, spaghetti? <laughs> I'm definitely in. Uh, Carrie? The king? Yeah, I'll take some. Save some for me. I gotta get this to the museum. No promises. Mm. Oh, shit! You good? Yeah, just a paper cut. Alright, I'm out for real this time. Make sure you put extra butter on my garlic bread. Alright. No, I mean extra, extra. When I leave here tonight, I plan on having a heart attack, so I can call out of work tomorrow. <laughs> Carrie? You okay? Shit, get away from her! Yo, she bitch! guys, Mikey here, and welcome back to the Comic Junkies Corner. Boy, it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> so, the Thursday edition, we talk about movies, TV shows, books, and all kinds of properties that have already been released. And these are spoiler reviews, so there is your spoiler warning. If you don't want to be spoiled, you have to go back and watch like the initial reactions and stuff like that. So, which I do plan on doing initial reactions from now on for both all of the for all of these properties now, so that you can get the spoiler review and the non-spoiler review, you know, depending on what you want. Also, if you're watching this on the website, welcome to McBlam Entertainment. And if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome back, YouTube. <laughs> it's been quite some time. So, welcome to the special three-part review of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4. And the reason for that being is because this season is pretty much split into three different parts. All related, but they're split into three different parts, so we're splitting the review into three different parts. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this review underway. So, Season 4 picks up right where Season 3 left off. Uh, Sky is now a rogue. I'm sorry. <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> Daisy. I, I just, you, you know, you would think after, like, what, two seasons now that you would get, I would get used to calling her Daisy, but no, I call her freaking Sky still. So, <laughs> but yeah, she is still gone rogue. Coulson, now there are some changes. There are changes in the actual hierarchy of S.H.I.E.L.D. We have a new director, Director Mace, who is an inhuman. If you've seen the show, just wait. We'll get to that. <laughs> but Director Mace, we have a new director, Director Mace. Um, uh, Simmons has moved up in the ranks and everything. Uh, there, the romance between Simmons and Fitz is still going strong. Thankfully, I'm happy to see that. Um, Mays, uh, Mays moved up a little bit, but Colson has stepped down from being director because you know he was a director in the last season, so 
but he's he stepped down, and the reason for that because he wanted to he wanted to undemonize Inhumans and you know just like let them let it be shown that hey they're good people they're just well not not good people but they're just people like us there's good ones and there's not so good ones and i really i really appreciated that i didn't know how i would feel about that at first but i really appreciated that i was like you know what i understand it i understand it but yeah all everyone's still there everyone's like you know just trying to adjust to the new shield and everything yes we have another new shield <laughs> but everyone's trying to adjust it's kind of funny at times and everything but that's not what you want me to talk about. Let's be real. That's not what you want to hear. You want to know about Ghost Rider. And let me just say, Ghost Rider is freaking phenomenal. When Ghost Rider is doing Ghost Rider things, he is phenomenal. He is great. I loved it. I loved every time the Ghost Rider uh, it was on screen. I was like, I loved it because... This was one of those things like the show just really went for it. They didn't really like, you know, they, they it was so easy to try to over explain it or give it some scientific reasoning or anything. It was just like, nah, it's stuff is just happening. <laughs> we don't have an explanation for it. We don't even know what's actually happening, but we know at some point we have to gain some type of control. We'll figure it out later, and I I really appreciated that because that really allowed the show to go for it. It went, it, honestly, it went into its over the top moment. Yes, it does have those moments sometimes, but it went for that over the top moments. It's almost like they they watched the original uh, original two Ghost Rider movies with Nick Cage, and they were like, oh, uh, yeah, let's let's keep that. Let's take out all the bull crap and just let's let's keep that. Let's keep the awesome stuff. And I feel like that's what they really did. And they really had to. For, it's Ghost Rider. You really have to just kind of go for it. But they didn't go to that over the top level where you didn't understand the gravity of what was going on in the show and what was actually happening. You knew there were still stakes. You knew there was still a mission to be accomplished. So you even though like yes, the Ghost Rider scenes were awesome. You were still invested in it, you know. You were, I mean, you were smiling and probably grinning and like, oh, that's cool and stuff like that. But at the same time, you understood, like, okay, yes. And honestly, this is almost like getting back. To, if I'm being honest, this is almost like getting back to Marvel's roots because this is kind of how I felt about like the first Marvel movies that were coming out. It was like, yeah, you still have these really awesome moments, but you were still able to understand. The gravity of what was happening and i feel like iron man and winter soldier were just absolute perfect representations of that so basically the first part of this series of this season is revolving around this book that's called the dark hold where'd this book come from hell <laughs> i don't freaking know i don't think anyone really knows other than the ghost writer that lives within robbie reyes himself but there are these scientists who open the book and they realize that they could create certain things they could create matter they could do the physically impossible and it turns out robbie's uncle who probably also read this book at some point um wanted the book for for the power to be able to do that now the thing is this book is is an evil almost evil book because it can alter a person so i still don't believe you can make an argument either way but i still don't necessarily believe that robbie's uncle was evil or just like this evil mastermind or whatever and wanted to just have this power i think like when you read it it corrupts you and everything so it so it corrupted him when he read it and it corrupted the you know the other doctors and everything and they actually became these entities that were uh killing people for the most part and like first turning you know making them go mad and then they would eventually kill them and may gets affected by this as well and it's pretty cool it's your pretty standard it's almost like a horror aspect almost and i kind of like that it was like oh, it's a little horror intertwined but not so like over the top scary it was just kind of like unnerving when it would happen 
because a lot of times when it happened, it was kind of unexpected. But after a while, you start to expect it and everything. And it, yeah, basically, you just you lose your sanity <laughs> for what's for whatever reason when they touch you. So basically, the the, the goal is to stop them, but come to find out that Robbie's uncle was behind this the whole time and he as the ghost writer has to take him down and he successfully do takes him to the I guess the underworld or whatever takes him to hell <laughs> or something like that because it fun because it turns out like you're not actually stealing from you're not actually creating matter and like there was still like that okay you're you're just stealing it from somewhere else and you're causing an imbalance so you have to stop that if you don't stop then you work, you're going to destroy everything so it, there was still that there is still some physical aspects scientifically explained but as far as ghost rider they're just like oh, i don't know <laughs> not a clue uh i will say this i was kind of hoping i was secretly hoping because there is a moment where you know robbie goes to the backstory how he became the ghost rider i was secretly secretly hoping for a Nick Cage cameo. I, I know it wasn't going to happen, but I was just like, I was secretly hoping for that because the original Ghost Rider, the one that rides the motor, he does show up. So I'm like, if you want to believe that that's Nick Cage, you absolutely can. Um, the events that technically happen in the first two movies are just like, okay, there was the one instance in New York that would probably, was it New York? I don't remember. But... <laughs> um, there was the one that happened in the first movie, but the second movie was so contained. Yeah, it was bad, but still, it was so contained. It was just like, no one would probably really care if this was really going on. Similar to what happens with, like, the Defenders and uh, other things and stuff like that. So, yeah, the first part of this series ends. Robbie takes down uh, his uncle, and everything seems like everything's going right. And there's, oh, there's also this AI, I forgot to mention. Ada. Ada is this AI developed by Dr. Radcliffe, and he she was teased at the end of the previous season, but she actually comes to fruition now. Like she is a uh, a fully you know automated android, and she can learn and understand, but can't really duplicate because she's not human. You know, so she she can understand emotion but does it like the terminator for the most part it's like yeah i understand the emotion i just can't do i can't have emotion it's just i can't do that i'm not programmed that way so um she can replicate it and stuff like that so yeah so like even like there's parts where like she can feel pain but it's only like a simulation so it's not technically real uh, but the actor that actress that portrays her very good very good like she seems very life like robotic that's the best way i can put it it's like she's has life and you under you appreciate her as a character but you can still b believe that okay yeah you're not human so uh, she it was it was a tough i think it's something tough to balance and i think it was done really well uh but she actually helps out with getting <laughs> with uh with with stopping Robbie's uncle and everything like that. She does a really good job. And at the end of this particular part of the series, she's making something which appears to be a brain. Why would she be making that? We'll have to find out in the next episode. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I really enjoyed this first part of the first third of the season. I thought it was done really well. It was, um, I thought it was just the, this, the amount of fun but seriousness and everything that could be done, like I say, it's like Marvel getting back to their roots. And I feel like, man, like they captured it very well. They did a really good job with this. So, um, yeah, I'm, I was definitely excited to see more going forward. And I did see the whole series, so you're going to have to find out more of what goes on in the series in the next episode. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching and being a part of the Glam Entertainment, where we try to bring a little enjoyment to your day every day. I really appreciate it, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, oh. What happened? You read the damn book before you came here, didn't you? Maybe. You were possessed by a demon. It's okay, though. I cured you. How? I had to shoot you in the face. Oh. Anyway, uh, Ash and I are going to get this book to the museum. Akim will stay here with you. Yeah. 
I drew the short straw. Gee, thanks. You'll be fine, though. We'll all be fine as soon as we get the book in the right hands. All I know is I'm going to go shower. I smell like death. All right. Ready? Let's go. Oh, my 